Hello, and welcome to What's Bubbling at Zim. I'm Inventor Dan Zen, and in this bubbling, we're going to take a look at a new way to load in custom fonts. And that is with the Zim Load Assets. Yay! So we've used Load Assets before to load in images and sounds, and now we can throw fonts in there as well. Super duper. So let's take a look and see how that works. All right, we've got a custom fonts Zim Bits example. So we've modified that to work with Zim 6.4.0. Let's see what that looks like. There it is, a custom font coming in. Now in the past, what we did is we used a timeout that went after however long we thought that it would take the font to load. And that was a bit of a guess. It would either be too long and therefore waste people's time, or it might be too short and you wouldn't see the custom font, so it wasn't pleasant. That's just because there wasn't really an easy way to tell if fonts were loaded. Uh, Create Jess came along and made uh, created a technique uh, that checks to see that I think an HTML tag changes in size and then it assumes that, that the font is loaded. So they created a font loader and that will handle the CSS and then, like I said, that test, uh, that polling test to find out if the font's loaded and give us a complete event. And that's in the preload.js module, but they didn't run it in, uh, they didn't sort of mix it in with the load queue. It seems to be a separate class with a separate event and therefore you, you might have you might have to do two different load events. Um, with the load assets, we've rolled it into one so that you can load your fonts and your images and sound, etc. And to get a complete event when that's done. You can also do them independently and we'll show you that in this bubbling. Another thing with the, uh, the load font class in CreateJS is there was a, a multitude of different ways that you could load load that font um, in five different ways, I think. And so we consolidated that, abstracted a little bit, and we just have one font object with a few different properties. And a little, oh, hey, let's go take a look at that. So here we are in the code, and it's a fit template. And we come on down, frame.loadassets, we're familiar with that. And here's that font object, we say, uh, a font property of a, a name and we can make that up and then down below here you can see that we're using that font name again inside of a label. We also have a source and that points to where that font is. I don't know, make that a bit bigger for you so you can see that. Whoa! <laughs> okay, uh, then when the frame is complete we call this function, and in that function, we're ready to use the font. Let's super just reduce that a little bit. Sorry. Okay, uh, great. That's pretty simple, huh? So there's how you can load in a custom font. You can also load in a Google font. And so what we'll do? Why don't Why don't we try that? We'll um, we can load in several fonts by this is the load asset. So we just use an array to do that. So here's our first one that we'll load in. And then comma here, we'll make a second one and we'll end our array. So we'll load in that Google font, Roboto. It's pretty easy using Google fonts, nice. Like that. Now with Google fonts, you can pass in extra parameters on the end, such as the family. And the family really um, is gonna take the place of that. So we don't need to pass in a font. As a matter of fact, if we were to pass in a font, it gets ignored. So that's maybe not the best thing to do because you might think that you can use a name for it here that would be different than that name when you can't. There's a couple other parameters or properties that we can pass in there as well, uh, such as the weight, the style, the type. Uh, but I find that generally we don't need to use those. But if you want to use those, you, you can use them here. And um, similarly to the, the font property here, uh, when when you use a Google font, you wouldn't use those other param properties either. You would um, ask for them here on the end of the URL. All right, so now we've loaded in two fonts, and when they're complete, let's use the Roboto. So we use Roboto there, and we save that, and we open in the browser here, and now in comes Roboto. Nice, huh? 
And we can test that uh, by saying DD there or something. That font doesn't exist. And we refresh. And there, that's a different font. OK, so let's go back to um, the Wildwood. So copy Wildwood. Paste that there. Save that. And a refresh here. And we're back to Wildwood. All right, so that's basically it, how we can load custom fonts now. You can load many. Um, I'll show you uh, a few different ways that we can load things, because there's some question as to how, how do we load things separately but at the same time, and how do we load things stepped one after another. And uh, let's take a look at all that kind of stuff now in a few different examples here. So here's a case where we're loading both fonts and images together all at once. Oh, and from an assets folder. I forgot to show you the assets folder there, but we can do it in this one. Uh, if we've got an assets folder, then we have no need to put in um, assets slash here, like so, because um, as with other load assets, we can specify an assets, or sorry, a path parameter. So that means coin and bomb and the font are all found in assets, which is true. Now, let's just pop on back for a second. If we were to do the same thing here, say comma assets like so, string and with a slash there, then we wouldn't need assets here. And we've made it so that if it starts with HTTP colon, it assumes it's an absolute URL and therefore you don't want the path. And that's for fonts. And, and that allows us to load fonts locally from an assets folder and also mix in some Google fonts in the same load assets. So that's great. Anyway, back over to which one was it? Loading fonts together here. Yes, that's it. Um, so we've loaded the font and some images from the assets folder. When all of that is complete, we have access to the assets like so, and we have assets to the font as well. OK, let's see that in the browser. There we go. OK, now another thing that you might want to do is maybe you want to separate that up and you, you want to load, say, the, the fonts, you want to load the images, and you don't really care which one loads first, but you might want to do something as soon as like a batch of them load and, and do something else when something else happens. So uh, here's how to do that. Now, uh, just going back to here, most people that have been using load assets are, are only aware that uh, we put the complete event or a complete event on the frame. Well, there's another way to do that, and uh, I'll show you here. You can take the load assets, so if we've got two different load assets, which we do in this case, we can assign them to a variable, and that represents a load queue. So this actually returns a zim, well, it's, it's not quite a load queue, it's a, it returns a zim queue object, which is just a very small object that keeps track of individual loadings. So in other words, bomb load, we can now put a complete event on bomb load. And this complete event will only run when this loading is complete. And here we have fonts load. <clears throat> and this event, this complete event, will only run when the fonts have loaded. So that separates that up. If we put, if we just said frame.onComplete and frame.onComplete, what would happen is whichever one of these completed first would call both those complete events. And, and that, wouldn't, that wouldn't be very good, would it? Because say if the bomb finished first, it called this complete event. So if we just had frame.onComplete there and frame.onComplete here, if the bomb finished, it would call that. But then this one would also get called, and it may be before, well, it would be before the font was even loaded or vice versa. If the font loaded first, which is probably the case because it's very small, if the font loaded first, it'd do this complete, but it would also trigger this complete, and we wouldn't have these assets yet. So this would certainly be a no-no. It's a no-no. So we instead assign them to their own queues, and that way we can capture completes separately. Is that clear? And let's see what 
open browser. There we go. We can't really tell which one came in first, although we can. Watch this. So here, uh, the bombs, imagine these are bigger and we want to emulate them taking a while. We can go comma. Uh, this next parameter here is XHR, which CreateJS has let us uh, access the things like text and stuff. But anyway, we won't do anything with that. We'll say null. This parameter, the fourth parameter, if we set that to a time, say two seconds, then it will make sure that even if these load before two seconds, it will take it will take two seconds before we show them. And that's a good thing to have, actually, from a user experience standpoint. You may have a loading screen or something like that that perhaps tells people some information or that has a really neat animation. And if if this loaded too quickly, you wouldn't be able to read the the information text, or you wouldn't be able to see the the animation, you know, in, in <laughs> complete. Now you don't want to waste too much time for people, but hey, a couple seconds might be worth it. So here we are saying, do not um, trigger this uh, until there's at least a minimum time of two seconds. So we save this and refresh here. There we go. This the fonts come in, but two seconds later. In come the bombs. Now we didn't put any loading screen in there, so I mean it's no big deal, but okay. Now we can switch that around too. Let's copy this or cut it from there. So we'll take it away from there and we'll add it down here. Now down here we don't have a path, so this one's got the path. So we need to say null for the path, null, and then we can paste. So now we'll make it the font take two seconds to come in. So these come in right away and the font. So do you get it? In this case, uh, we don't really care which one comes first, whichever one, whichever batch loads, then we get to do something for that batch. And if the other batch loaded first, then we get to do something for that other batch. Okay, so in parallel. Now a third type is when we do care which one comes first and we want them to load in steps. We want to load the font first or the images first and then the font. In this case that's what we have. We're loading the images or an image first in this case and when that's complete we will then load... oh when it's complete we then put the image on the stage and we also then load the font. And when the font is complete, so once we complete the font, then we can show the label. Now we have to be careful here because if we did this like we were doing before with this frame dot on complete, show the bomb, and then load more assets, what would happen is when the font asset loads, this complete would run, but so would this complete. So to avoid that from happening, to prevent that from happening, to avoid that happening or prevent it from happening, we do something special with this on method. If we get to the end of it, I'll put that right there, a little underline down here. There's the end of that. What we do is we pass in a fourth parameter of true. And what this does is it will only run this, um, this uh, function once and it takes away the event. So in other words, it'll only capture that complete event once and then it's taken away. Now that's for any on event, so that's a CreateJS functionality, any on event, that's one really cool thing about on it, on methods, I should say, is that the fourth parameter, if you set it to true, it will only run that um, event once and then it, the event is removed. So that's important because once our bomb is complete, uh, it will trigger this, this complete event, but it will never trigger this complete event again. For instance, the next time we load something, we won't trigger that. Okay, so that's uh, one thing that's going on there. And a little bit later, we have a timeout saying two seconds later, let's load some assets again. And we run yet another complete event that, had, that loads the coin in. Now, it, therefore, it's important that inside here, when we have this complete event for the font, we want to make sure that we run that complete event only once as well.
So let's save this up and see if this works. And we should view it in a browser, open in browser. Um, okay, and there's that, good. So we refresh again. Now they both appear to come in at the same time. So we can adjust that a little bit if we want to see a layered effect by saying null, comma, Hmm. We have to be a bit careful. We'll make that one second. The reason why we have to be a bit careful is that if we went two seconds, we'd have both those things completing at about the same time. This is for an arrangement where you know that this is going to happen much later. As a matter of fact, let's just move that to three seconds. Okay, and it probably wouldn't be in a timeout. It would be, hey, say you go to page four, and on page four, you want to load some more assets. You have to be careful. If you use the frame.oncomplete, you want to make sure that there's no other frame.oncompletes from before left around. Now, another way you could do that is just don't use the frame.oncomplete. Assign this one that's going to happen later to a variable. Var last load is equal to that. And then put last load on, oops, on that. And then you know it's not going to trigger some previous complete event because this is the only complete event on last load. At which point you would no longer need that in there like so. Anyway, let's see all this work. We refresh here. Oh, what do we see? So a delay on the bomb and then the custom font. And then that is coming in three seconds later. We could even put a delay on the font. Boop, 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 boop. That's here. We need null, comma, null, comma. Uh, I'll make it one second. So it's going to wait one second and load the bomb, one second and load the font, and then I guess one second later, one second bomb, one second font, one second later, um, coin. <laughs> nice coin. Cool, huh? So hopefully that helps with some of the nuances of loading. You can see that we've, we've pretty well got it all covered here. Just be very careful uh, when you're using frame.oncompletes um, to make sure if it's a sequence thing, like one inside another, then make sure that you're clearing the last one. If you're ever running in parallel, you just really got to watch it because... Um, uh, you don't want to be clearing the wrong events or anything like that. If you're running in parallel, I uh, would suggest you use a named load queue. So, or, so this is a zim queue, sorry. Right? Yeah, that's what's going on here at Zim. So that's what's been bubbling. I'm Inventor Dan Zen. And if you enjoyed that bubbling or it was you know, helpful to you, you're welcome to hit that little like button. Not too many people hit that little like button. Lots of people seeing the videos, but uh, if you've got a YouTube account, we'd love to see that you're, you're happy with something. So hit that little like thing, and we'll catch you later. Ciao.